Hi YouTube, so it is Elizabeth back again. I wanted to go ahead and kind of film the follow-up to 10 things your labor nurse wants you to have in your hospital bag or wants you to pack in your hospital bag. This is kind of a follow-up part two of that video. 10 things your labor nurse does not want you to pack in your hospital bag. So backing up from that, I want to say first off, I love this community and in my last video I had several posts and um, suggestions on other things to bring that I just want to touch on. So first off, I am located in the United States, if you cannot tell by my accent, and most of our hospitals here, in fact every hospital that I've worked at that I've heard of, provides um, diapers for the baby, pads and uh, mesh underwear for mom that are both disposable. And so I did not include those in things to pack in your hospital bag. But if you're delivering at a birthing center, if you know that your hospital doesn't provide those things, if you're in other countries I can't really speak to, then that would be worth looking into if you need to bring your own pads and diapers. Somebody else mentioned that they hate the mesh underwear and pads, they like to bring their own underwear. To that I'd like to say that, um, I'm not a big fan of bringing your own underwear because you're making more laundry for yourself. Now if you bring your own underwear that you just want to throw away, maybe, but I think the mesh panties are are fine, personally. Whoa! Hold in. Sorry guys. Let's, let's move you over a little bit and give you some time to see how long this lasts. Sorry, Holden's up, Zoe's around. May's having quiet time. It's probably going to be a zoo in here pretty quickly, so let me get, get back on track. Um, some other people mentioned like getting like depends or always like underwear or I know Frida Baby makes now like postpartum underwear. But again, for me personally, like I think those are great. Patients seem to enjoy them, but if you can save yourself money and space in your hospital bag, just use what the hospital provides. Sorry. So, um, the other thing that I wanted to mention is water bottles. Everybody's like, oh, bring your own water bottle. Again, our hospital provides really nice, reusable, like, large water bottles, but not all hospitals do, and it's really nice, you're right, to have a nice big water bottle with a straw. So if you don't think that your hospital provides those or you just want to bring your own, throw that in under the snack category. <laughs> you just wanted to see yourself, you big old chunk of monk. He's naked because he's. Um, we're about to eat. Eat some lunch. Oh, what did you find? Dog hair. So, something else I want to touch on that somebody mentioned, birth plan. Yes, having your birth plan, if you have one written down, is definitely something you want to make sure that you have in your hospital bag and you can give to the nurse when you first get there. Um, somebody else mentioned things to help you with a natural birth, which I totally agree, and maybe I'll do a whole video on like things you can bring from home to help you deal with labor. But since not everybody's planning on a natural birth, that was more of like a general overview for people who are. Um, something I didn't mention, but that you definitely need to have are clothes for your partner. I don't want to see anybody else's butt or anybody else in their underwear but my patient and their baby. Facts. Like, it's awkward when dad's walking around in his boxers. I'm sorry. It just is. It just is. So let's go ahead and get started to the meat and potatoes of this video. 10 things I think that you should not pack in your hospital bag or 10 things that I advise maybe putting in the car but not necessarily bringing into the hospital. Okay. So number one is going to be, and this might be controversial too, a fancy hospital gown that you went out and bought. Like I said, I'm a big proponent for not making more laundry for yourself than you have to have. Now that being said, if you know that you're one of those people who's really, really anxious about being in the hospital and like anything that makes it feel less like a hospital experience is helpful, then by all means bring something of your own to wear while you're in labor. But you do not need to go out and spend, I saw one of them for $80 on a hospital gown that is going to get pretty dang nasty. Um, and. You know, you can wear a nightgown, you can wear a sports bra and shorts, you can wear one of our hospital gowns. So that's not something that I would recommend everybody run out and buy. I do not think that they're necessary while they are cool. Oops. I once had a patient come in and she had this, it was like unicorn glitter and it was so fun, but it literally got glitter all over the birthing suite and on her baby. Like not really necessary. Cute, I get it, but not really necessary. I would bring something, a cute robe for after maybe, um, but not, and maybe walking around in like latent labor if you're there for an induction, but not something special that you want to wear when you're giving birth because most of the time you're just naked. Truth, sorry, don't come for me, but it is what it is. So something else that I think a lot of people, I saw some people recommend this one too, um, a nursing pillow. So I think it just maybe depends on the type of nursing pillow that you have. 
that are shaped like this and go around mom. They don't do a great job supporting, doing enough support, especially when mom still has that, um, that uterus that's a little bit enlarged. They don't do a great job supporting baby. Pillows in the hospital are gonna work better in my personal opinion and having worked with nursing mothers than a breastfeeding pillow. The breast friend pillow, which I actually prefer and I don't have here because I've given to my sister-in-law because she's pregnant, um, I prefer, but again, something I wouldn't necessarily bring into the hospital, put it in the car, and if you find while you're breastfeeding that you feel like you need it, you can definitely bring it in, but it's not something that I feel like everybody needs to bring to the hospital or they won't be able to breastfeed. All you need to breastfeed are boobs and a baby. Going off of that one, the third thing that I don't really think you need to bring is your breast pump. Again, don't come for me, but this is gonna be your breast pump in the hospital. And unless you're planning on exclusively pumping, this little guy will probably be all you need. Now, your baby might have issues with latching. You might be needing to pump um, because you're separated from your baby. And in both of those instances, your hospital should be providing you with a hospital grade breast pump. Um, if you wanna bring your breast pump in and have lactation show you how to set it up, that's definitely something that can happen, but it's not something that you have to have before you have your baby. Another thing that maybe leave in the car, bring and leave in the car. You could bring it in if you think you'll want it, but it's not something that every single mom needs to have. I didn't even have a breast pump before I gave birth to my first child. I did end up having to go rent one because she was jaundiced. And really, if you are trying to establish a milk supply, you should be using a hospital grade breast pump versus one that you would buy um, from Target. You want something hospital grade that just is stronger to establish a milk supply. And that's one that you can get at the hospital. So. I, bringing your personal pump, I think it's just another thing that you bring and you probably won't won't get out of the box. But again, if you really feel like you need it and you want lactation to help you set it up, bring it, leave it in the car. You don't need to bring it in right away and you might not even end up needing it because baby is our best pump that we have. So, going off my first video, I talk about getting snacks. We love snacks, snacks are great. Things that are not great are perishable snacks, especially perishable snacks that then get stinky if they're not refrigerated. Most hospitals aren't gonna have patient-specific refrigerators in every single room, simply because then they would have to monitor the temperatures of those refrigerators in every single room, and that's quite costly. So a lot of people will have um, just like a standard refrigerator that has drinks and some snacks in it, but you can't store your own stuff. So because you don't have a patient-specific refrigerator in which to keep food, don't bring anything perishable that you cannot eat right away or throw away or have somebody take home with you because there's nothing worse than a room with like a vegetable platter tray that has broccoli that's been sitting out because that smells worse than any part of having a baby smells. Speaking of smells, something else that might be a little bit controversial that I think you probably should leave at home is an essential oil diffuser. Now essential oils can be really, really helpful during labor. And I am all for having some lavender on a like cloth that you're smelling, but I think when you bring an essential oil diffuser, you are making everybody else in the hospital smell your essential oils and there are people who have issues with asthma or other respiratory issues we actually had a nurse recently who uh, she was a travel nurse so she's not with us anymore but she was anaphylactically allergic to lavender and so she came in and somebody was diffusing lavender and she had to leave and not work that shift because she was having such respiratory distress so i think in the same way that your healthcare provider should not be wearing strong perfume or body wash being conscientious of others with your essential oils um, and your essential oil use is important. Maybe you can bring and ask if you can diffuse, but I know that some places have a strict like no diffusing essential oil policy for that reason. And there are some hospitals that let you diffuse essential oils but actually provide their own diffusers and their own essential oils so that they're more in control of the blends and stuff that they're using. But just, just something to think about how you're going to be using your essential oils to be the least disruptive to the whole unit and to the other people who are involved in your care. And just asking is totally fine, but people do do it and I like the smell, but again, I don't have asthma and I don't have allergies to any essential oils. Moving on to things for baby. There are a few things for babies that you definitely just don't need in the hospital. And the first is gonna be anything that creates an unsafe sleep environment. So that's big fuzzy blankets, stuffed animals that you want in the crib, pillows for the baby in the crib. None of those things you should be using at home with your baby. Um, I know a lot of people will give you those kind of 
to have somewhere in the nursery that look really cute, but you don't need to bring those to the hospital. They're just gonna take up space, and unless there's some real sentimental value, I would not worry about bringing those. Something else you don't need for babies is baby socks. They will just get lost. They'll just get lost. Bring a onesie with some feet if you feel like your baby's feet will be cold, but they're gonna be swaddled, and guess what? Baby's hands and feet tend to be a little bit chilly just because their circulation is really perfusing all their vital organs. So not something I would recommend are baby socks. Um, and really, or baby mittens. They're just something that's going to get lost. But uh, a lot of the little onesies and shirts for newborns have the little hand things that go over if you wanna protect them from their fingernails because the next thing I don't want you bringing are fingernail clippers. It is almost impossible to clip your baby's fingernails when they are first born because they're so soft from being in the amniotic fluid. And because they're so soft, it's really easy to clip down and clip off the ends of their fingers. Um, like they're not gonna like not have fingers, but it's gonna bleed. They're gonna be a little bit uncomfortable. You're gonna feel horrible. So the nice thing is these nails are nice and soft. They rip off really easily. But if you're worried about that, a little nail file is going to work so much better for those nails. So don't bring nail clippers for your babies. You don't need to be bringing diaper rash cream, baby powder, which we know we shouldn't be using anyway, lotions, oils, anything like that. Um, baby might get a bath in the hospital, but the vernix and stuff on them is really moisturizing. Just rub that into their skin. A little breast milk will be great on any baby acne or newborn rash that pops up. And the meconium is not acidic enough to cause skin breakdown. So you really do not need to be bringing any extras for baby's bootay while you're in the hospital. Back to mama, something that we don't want you to bring from home is your home medications. Any medicine that you take in the hospital, be it Tylenol, ibuprofen, oxycodone, prenatals, we want to be dispensing it to you because if there's an emergency, we want to know what medications you've been taking and when you last took them. Now, if you have a lot of home meds and you want to bring them in so that you can tell us the dosage, that's totally fine, but we don't want you taking your home meds for from a safety standpoint. I know with ibuprofen, it seems silly not to be able to take your home med, but it's it's really important that we are keeping track of what medications you're getting and that you aren't taking medications from home. Unless otherwise asked to by your doctor, like we don't carry progesterone vaginal suppositories, so we tell people to bring those in and then they actually go down to our pharmacy and get labeled and come right back up. So unless directed otherwise by your healthcare provider, do not bring and take your home medications in the hospital. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you brought anything ridiculous in your uh, hospital bag that you didn't end up using. Sometimes when you're pregnant, it seems really, 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 really important to bring something kind of crazy. So, you know what? These are all just suggestions though. You do you, as I've said before, and birth on, ladies. Bye.